came to Earlston and then we came here to Burpee Road and I went to St Barbara's but I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. And the minute I walked in the door here was Shirley O'Donnell. She welcomed me. And I thought, this is where I want to be. It wasn't my mum saying, you'll go there or the like. It was my decision. And I did have a bit of a problem with this green cross. I didn't think it should have been moved and I did boycott the church for three months but this is where I wanted to be. So uh, we joined Ernston Methodist Choice Church in 2005 when we came down from Scotland and I just remember it being a really vibrant and fun um, and welcoming church with lots of young people, lots of future friends for my children and lots of people interested in where we come from and the sorts of things that we might be able to enjoy with worship. Like change, like, there's not that many like young people in the church, like I thought like, yeah, like kids, teenagers and like young adults as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing. Uh, yeah. Well I, <laughs> I was going through a difficult time in my life when I came here a few years ago and uh, the welcome person and she was so kind and it was the immediate it's a difficult thing for anybody to come into anywhere for the first time and I didn't know anybody here it was a choice of perhaps going to here or, or Green Lane but toss of a coin I decided to come here and Margaret was on duty and she was friendly face, did everything to put me at ease, let me in and sat down next to, side to me. And that was a, a feeling of welcome. Simple as that. several special services. Um, my first one is my accreditation, um, which is literally imprinted on my brain. Um, my accreditation to be a local culture. Um, I don't think I'll ever, ever forget that. Um, my second one and Jason's wedding uh, our daughter so, um, in fact there's four really um, and then uh, five years later Catherine walked into church pushing a pram and uh, everybody welcomed her so so much um, with Joshua and then from the pulpit, Michael Harris, who actually did the address at my accreditation, physically welcomed Joshua into um, the church. And then Joshua's baptism. It was, it's just, it's just such a welcoming church. And We need to keep the church that way. We need to keep our arms wide open. And yes, we do need to let our light shine. We need to prepare the way for others.
Uh, so anything that's special, uh, what does it mean to me? Less special music. Um, I don't know, I think the church is like very musical in terms of like when you that like, always got the organ. Because maybe like some churches do not have that. You have the organ, you got like the steel pan that sometimes are involved in services. You've got the worship band, which is like often involved in services. And I think that in some places, like it wouldn't be as like musically involved, which is really nice. And also like, it means that everybody, even during normal service, everybody's involved in singing, which means that like everybody's like involved in music and that I feel like that helps people come closer to God in that broad sense, which other churches might lack. And also the church, I guess because the way it's positioned in Nelson, it means that like when there's stuff like May Day festivals and stuff like that, it plays like a big role because like, people are coming in or when you got like the church hall and then people are coming in and like plays a big role because even though people might not like come to worship here, they still see it as like a place that kind of belongs to them that they can like go to or when you got Wellspring uh, during the week people can come to, to eat or to do whatever they want to do here. So it feels like, like even though like it's mainly made for worship, it's also a place that people can come to to do like whatever activities they want to do during the week. My first impressions of Elston Methodist Church, as I was virtually born in here, <laughs> but my first memories are all of the Criterion Theatre, which it is now, which were the Sunday School in Barclay Road. And I must have been six, because I clearly remember selling bricks for the new church hall. And we had a card with all the bricks on, we used to go around and sell our bricks and see who could sell them fastest. And the combination of that was when we all stood outside in Barclay Road, outside the uh, Sunday School, and all got ready to parade with the banners all the way down to here. And I remember standing with my Sunday School teacher, Margaret Carter, leaning on the fence, watching my grandpa, who by then was retired and a supernumerary here, um, that had been minister here in the war, and I remember standing watching him and the service that they were there. We'd be in about nine in the late, well, let's see, nineteen late eighty, probably nineteen ninety, because I think it was nineteen nineties. Because nineteen ninety five, I joined the church. So before that, when I came, I can remember I did try. Uh, I visited most of the other churches in the area, as you do, and um, uh, I just didn't feel anything. I'm one of these people that I have to feel something, and I, I you know, you hear people say, well, the building felt warm and cozy. Well, it's not the building, but in any event, I have to feel something. I didn't feel anything, and so I came in here, and I sat down all the way over in the corner, as you do, and sitting in front of me was um, Ros Light's dad, okay? And actually, I lie, he sat behind me. And then he said, oh, are you new? And he, he, we started talking. And he said, oh, I do hope you come back again. So I thought, well, that was nice. And then there were a few other people that spoke to me. So I made a quick exit and I went home. And then a few weeks later, I came back. And it was like old home week. Hi, good to see you again. And it was just lovely. And I thought, this is the place. This is the one that I'm going to stop at, which I did. And um, so what does it mean to me? It's a family. EMC is my family. And um, the people that I look at as my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I feel connected and related to them. And I feel that they support me. And they have supported me through a lot of problems that I've had. And they've been so supportive. And that's what they mean to me. And um, I, I, <clears throat> I have a friend who's just moving house because she needs to go to a, uh, get closer to her family. And I thought, well, I can't move house because I'm close to my family. And I wouldn't want to move away. 
Over the years, there's been quite a lot of number of services that have moved me or meant something to me, and particularly or spoke to me. But there's one memorable service that took place on the 27th of December, 1971. My husband and I had both been members of families that came to Elston, um, lifelong members, and we've known each other since childhood. And in um, 1969, my mum died at the age of 39. And in January 2071, David's mum died. And the 27th of December, 1971, the year that David's mum died, was the day that we got married. And it wasn't, I'm not talking about it as memorable because we got married. We had to get married in December because we had to get married in school holidays as I was a teacher. Um, but it was, you know, it'd be Christmas day, we'd all been at church Christmas day, um, Boxing Day was a Sunday, so we'd all been at church on Sunday, and we were getting married on the Monday morning. And honestly, I thought it would just be, well, I just expected it would be our family and a few close friends that we could afford to invite to the reception. And um, I arrived at the church with my father, and I walked in the back door, and I could not believe my eyes. The church was packed round. There wasn't an empty seat in any of the pews, and yes, we had pews then. And as I walked up the aisle, people turned and smiled at us. And it was the church family come together to fold round us, to show us that they loved us and that they cared about us. And they gave up their family time and part of their Christmas to share that special day with us. And I shall never forget it. And I think that speaks enormously about the kind of fellowship that I have always experienced at Elsa Methodist Church. What makes Elsa Methodist Church special is, like I said before, the down to earthness, the fact that you accepted, doesn't matter where you're from, what creed, race, doesn't matter, you accepted, you are uh, accepted and made to feel welcome. And you don't have to. You don't have to bring anything, you don't have to you don't have to be anything, you just have to just come and just be with the people. And you feel uh, I feel that the people are special to me because everyone's been warm, friendly, kind, compassionate, very nice and that's what makes it special. I was gonna say I think um um Earth Methodist Church uh does make people feel special because it's a very welcoming um, community of people that come here. They they always greet. They always well. I know I always try to greet people, and I know that's how I felt when I first came here. But I came many years ago with through my mother-in-law because she was a member of Elston Methodist Church, and um, the children used to come to Sunday school here. So. That's the connection a long time ago, um, and then we, when we were in Fos, well, of course, the children joined the boys and the girls brigade, and we went to Earls, uh, to um, Fosal Baptist Church because the services were there. My memory of Earlston is of a, a very creative people. Um, who are actually very welcoming of, of, of new people um, and most of all I think there is the fact that they embrace change I mean there be those who would moan but there weren't that many who moaned. Um, and I came to the conclusion that it was in those days, I'm sure it's different now because society is different, but in those days, it, the, the generations of the old families were still here. So the youngsters were their own family, their own family. And that meant <coughs> that they would accept change better than if it was just outsiders coming in. 
um, and so the outsiders were able to latch on to you know, the, the youngsters who wanted to change things. Does that make sense? I mean, yes. So I think that, that's, um, that was my overwhelming, um, yeah, overwhelming um, feeling about it. Another memory I have is of Chris Hugh Smith coming for the church anniversary. Um, and of course I was preaching somewhere else because he was preaching here and um, but they saved me the place at his right hand side for the anniversary meal um, came in plonked myself down next to him um, he gave me a kiss and then said so what's happening here then so I said what do you mean he said it is more God than Earlston Methodist Church. So I said, so are you saying it wasn't always? And he said, it's noticeably different. Uh, I said, very astute of you. Um, and I remember him sending, um, yes, and I will tell this because it was actually, he said, well, put it this way. Um, Colin Morris came here in his presidential year and on the way home, Chris driving him home, Colin said to him, they defied me to impress them. Um, I never impress people who want to be impressed. Um, and Chris said, now that's different. Um, and I always remember him sending a card, a thank you card for the hospitality in which he said, to the church, not to me, um, I'm telling people the story of how the Holy Spirit can transform community, not just individuals. Um, so that's a strong memory. What does Earthman Methodist Church mean to me? It's important to me. Um, well, I've been brought up in lots of churches. Um, and Perhaps I'm much, much more used to um, very informal, um, charismatic churches where you get very much involved with healing all the time and things like that. Um, I find, um, although I must say from the very beginning, um, when I was a child. I loved the Methodist churches. Um, I used to go to my grandmother's church every Sunday and that was wonderful. I used to go to Anglican in the morning for my mother. But I always loved the Methodist ones and I thought they were brilliant. Um, I think the Methodist church has gone down a lot in what it, um, and the depth of its belief um, so your earliest memories? My earliest memories is my entire life. This is the only church I've been coming to, as my parents brought me here. And uh, my 71 years of life at the moment, it uh, was the only place I've been. Of course, we come Sundays. I didn't come last Sunday because I was doing something else. <laughs> and also, um, on Thursdays and I help, same as you do, creating the place and keeping it working. So that is the only memories I have is my whole life. Well, one of my earliest, well first memories I can remember that a long long time ago, each when, each Monday or Easter Monday I used to get, not lumbered, but I used to get uh, called on to arrange Easter Monday rambles. And we went for, to quite a lot of places and we had quite a large number of people that used to come along and join in. And still I keep coming across pictures now uh, in, on the computer and that brings back happy memories. And they were good times, a good fellowship, walking several hours throughout the day and having a lunch somewhere midway. Uh, so that was one particular memory I had. And a lot of the people are still around, fortunately, <laughs> that uh, we can talk about these things. So I'm asked, what were my first impressions of EMC, or 
my earliest memories of EMC, Earls the Methodist Church, and um, I'm steeped in Methodism. My background goes back to my grandfather who was a Methodist minister, uh, I think my great-grandfather, uh, my father was a local preacher in the Methodist Church, so I've been brought up in the Methodist tradition, I went to a Methodist church, and in my 20s I moved away a bit from worship and, and Methodism and just enjoyed my 20s in other ways. And then when uh, the family came along in the 1990s, uh, my wife Alison came along to the Toddlers, Parents and Toddlers Club in the church hall. And so whilst it, you might think it would be me who uh, came to the Methodist church first, it was in fact through Alison's involvement with the Parents and Toddlers that I found myself and Alison and our boys coming to Earlston Methodist Church in about 1992. So my first impressions were uh, a modern church in a lovely suburban location. This was just after the redevelopment. The pews had been taken out. It was open. It was welcoming. And those impressions have stayed with me for the last 30 years as the church has moved forward uh, into the 21st century and kept refreshing what it does. Well, we came, we moved to Earlston in uh, 1970. And uh, on the first Sunday, we came down from Woodland Avenue to Earlston and were greeted at the door by Rod. And he made us really welcome, and we came in. And Betty Clements was here as well, the minister's wife, and uh, she was very welcoming as well. And we uh, came back, and which and we've been here ever since. So uh, that is my first impression, was the friendliness and the welcome, and the fact that Rod was out on the pavement welcoming us, not inside the doors, he was out on the pavement and did it for many, many years afterwards. Um, so that is my earliest memory of um, Earlston. I think there's quite a few services that... Uh, that um, uh, come to you but they're mainly when people I feel uh, talk about their own experiences through the church I always feel that that gets to you better because you feel as if you can relate to them and something that's happened in your life whereas if somebody comes along and reads for a book I know it's not it is you have to have equal balance you have to have a balance of like the Bible and things like that but often people speak about the Bible and I feel that that things have happened in their life that relate to the Bible anyway, in a way. Other notable memories we have are wedding blessed on the 10th anniversary. Um, that was, was that John? Yeah, John Waterhouse. And we had a little do in the church hall. And quite nicely, the council had laid on the carnival on that day and we had the Coventry City bus came past and it was the year that they won the cup and Victor took Joshua, sorry Joshua, Paul, <laughs> get the right child, um, onto the bus to touch the cup. So that is one quite a vivid memory of that. My earliest memories I mean, I have memories of special events. We've seen christenings of all our children, all our grandchildren, well, most of them. Um, and we have seen our daughter get married here. Um, and well, a lot of, I th when you say, is there anything I'd like to change? Um, I think if I say anything to Bill about this, he says to me, no, Carol, we can't have it like that because in the past, you know. But when I go home, when I go to chapel, because it's chapel, you know, uh, it's it is different. We don't have flip charts, Heather, and all the other things. Because I thought last Sunday was, if anybody walked into our church that day, they'd have thought, what is happening here today? You know, I know we've got to be more modern, haven't we? I mean, I'm 78 in the fall as time, so obviously, you know, we look at things differently, don't we, Heather? And we know we've got to have change. We, our lives have changed completely, haven't they? Particularly since COVID. And, but some things I think I wish were still the same 
in the church for the county. I would like to change. Well, I'm a radical. <laughs> um, I think that we need to look at what we do in worship, how we use the evening worship slot in particular, because we've stopped using it. And that's an opportunity to use different formats of worship that will involve a range of people. Um, one thing I do appreciate is the singing here is very good. There are two or three churches in the circuit where the singing is, for me, spirit-filled, and this is one of them. I was a Methodist church. I came to Coventry, moved to Coventry, um, about 13 years ago, and um, I wanted to join a Methodist church. So I walked to the what I thought was the nearest one, um, and which was about a mile, and I came in, and uh, it was a special service actually. <laughs> it was a farewell to the current minister, and there was a bring and share meal afterwards. And um, I thought, oh, this is right. <laughs> um, but I was made very welcome. Um, people were very kind. They said, please stay and have some some food, even though I hadn't brought anything. And um, then uh, someone came up and spoke to me. Martin Ingalls came up and spoke to me and said, I hear you're from Kings Lynn. And I said, yes, that's right. Do you know it? And he said, my wife's father was the Methodist minister there. And just somehow I felt that God was saying, you're in the right place. <laughs> and I felt at home from the, the moment I came in this church. Um, and things haven't always been um, everything in the garden rosy all the time, <laughs> are they ever? But um, ups and downs there have been in the last 13 years in my life and in the life of the church, but um, I still really enjoy being here and the people here. Um, and some services I get a lot from services I don't get much from at all but you've got to keep on keeping on and uh, just trusting that God is with you and helping you day by day um, and I've I've enjoyed um, becoming part of different organizations within the church um, I've uh, enjoyed uh, joining in prayer times fellowship times, house group, um, and um, being part of Wednesday Word, um, and, and, and I really enjoy prayers and bears, the toddler church on a Wednesday morning. I, I have no grandchildren of my own, I enjoy seeing the little ones and watching them grow, <laughs> so <laughs> that's a great joy to me. So this church, Earlston Methodist Church, has brought me a lot of joy. What does EMC mean to me? It's, uh, can I say it's my spiritual home? Mm -hmm. I have memories of special events in the past, yeah. The daughter's wedding, yeah. That's, uh, the youngest daughter. Yeah. Yes, we remember, because we were introduced here by Ros's family, weren't we? Yeah, what Ros was the first one I remember? And what are your earliest memories of EMC? Gwyn, Gwyn invited Stop. us. Gwyn, Gwyn yeah. Yeah. <laughs> invited us and... Uh, because we'd been without a church a little bit, and uh, we said, come along, and we did, and uh, we were made welcome. Um, Enjoyed the services? Yes, it was, mm -hmm. uh, um, Rosie's dad, I think, uh, came up and said, hello, how are you, mm -hmm. and, you know, and all that, so uh, that was nice. That was, uh, Mr Holt, who used to go around shaking hands, and <laughs> an estate agent. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, My first impressions of EMC, uh, well, only a few people know of these, of course, because I, uh, I originally came from the Bell Green area. So my first impression was of those uh, Christmas parties, I suppose, or Harvest Festival parties in the old school room in Barclay Road, which is now the Criterion Theatre. I was brought to my parents. Um, we moved in just down Albany Road and had a, had a shop there. So it was a short walk. In those days, uh, the ladies always wore their hats and coats when we came for an evening social. 
and uh, there were, I think there seemed to be called some electric fire and things like that. But it was always a very enjoyable thing. There were other youngsters there, uh, as well as uh, elderly people uh, that you perhaps uh, didn't spend quite so much time with. Um, now, that's, a, that's the very first memory as such. Uh, later on, I think I had a not so good memory. I'm not a, not a very sporty sort of youngster, etc. And uh, my, my parents um, suggested I might try the, uh, the Cubs. And I went along to the Cubs, which again was at the school room on Parkview Road. And um, I think I went, I think I had three visits to the Cubs. It was, it was quite interesting. But it was summer, so uh, when we had sort of 10 minutes after the start, uh, we went outside into a large playground, which is now a car park, to play rounders. Well, of course, not being a sporty person, that, that didn't grab me at all. So I'm afraid fever visits the Cubs and not at all. But then later on, um, as a number of people still in the church will realise, I uh, became in, the, uh, in my younger days, as a teenage younger days, uh, a member of the youth club. And, uh, subject to um, David and Margaret Carter, who uh, took over from Heather's um, father, John Dale, and uh, even, indeed others before them, uh, I think had many, many good years as a teenager, and um, became, I think at that stage, became involved in the church, um, became the Sunday school secretary for some time, and then assistant youth club leader just before I got married, and then tailed off. Um, we get to the stage now where you can have all sorts of impressions um, going on but might be quite a number that you don't like perhaps. <laughs> uh, because uh, I think uh, it's fair to say that I, I rub up the wrong way on, on quite a number of people because sometimes if I've got an, an idea in my head about the church I'd like to carry it forward and that and people don't agree with me. Well you know, if you can't get it done, you can't get it done, and that's it. But there again, that doesn't mean, necessarily mean to say you're going to do what other people.